Next.js 15 was just announced and there's a ton of changes, but the most anticipated are the changes to how the cache works, specifically around the fetch function. And a lot of these changes look really good on the surface, but in my opinion, they really drop the ball on fixing the actual problems of caching. So in this video, I wanna talk about what these new changes are, how they do actually improve things, and some of the things that are still confusing about the cache in Next.js. We all know that we should be using social media less, but it can be difficult to completely cut out social media, especially when you're talking about learning web development because things change so quickly and social media is one of the best places to learn about all of these new updates. But there's a lot of baggage that comes with social media because you spend so much time on it, which is where today's video sponsor daily.dev comes in because they essentially cut out all of the crappy parts of social media and give you just the important stuff that you actually care about. Daily.dev essentially just combines together all the best articles and videos out there into one place where you can really easily fine tune and sort through exactly what you want. For example, I have mine set up to show me just front end web development related topics, and I only want it to show me release information and news information so I can stay up to date with the latest stuff by spending only a couple minutes a week looking through all the new articles. Now you may be trying to learn web development so you can fine tune your list to give you things like tutorials and articles explaining different concepts in web development instead of mine, which cuts those out. Now, if you wanna try out daily dev for yourself, I highly recommend it. I'm gonna put a link in description where you can actually check this out. I just wanna say thanks again to daily.dev for sponsoring this video. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner and to really showcase these new changes and exactly what they mean for you. I have two applications running, one using Next.js 14, one using Next.js 15, and they have the exact same code between the two different versions so we can really see exactly what's happening. And I'm gonna be showcasing the three main things that they're talking about in Next.js 15. The first is that fetch requests are no longer going to be cached by default, which is really huge, but honestly kind of drops the ball in a few places. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a bit. They're also making it so that Git route handlers are no longer cached by default, which is amazing. And then finally, that the client router cache no longer caches things by default as well, which is another great change in my opinion. And I'll show you exactly what all of these mean, because for the most part, these last two are really great, but this first one really drops the ball in my opinion. So let's go back to our application and look at the code that we have running. The very first thing that you'll notice is this is my API route. This little API link brings me to this page. I'll zoom it in so it's a little easier to see. We can see version 14, version 15, and all it does is return to us a completely random number. Number. It doesn't matter which version I'm on, 14 or 15, all the code's exactly the same, so it just returns to me a random number. Now if we go back here to our original pages, and I zoom this back out, you can see here that we have our other page. The other page just returns a completely random number, so you can see we get a random number in these particular scenarios. And this home page, all it does is make a fetch request to get a completely random number from an API. And if we look at that API, you can see all it does is just return a random number. So essentially we're just looking at the different ways that we can handle random number generation to see what's cached and what's not. We have an API route, we have something that's just using a random number, and we have something that is going out and doing a fetch request to see all the differences that we have. Now we're running our application in development mode right now. I will be swapping over to production mode later because there are some differences between development and production, which even makes the cache more confusing than it already is. So let's take a look at the Next.js 14 version to see exactly what we get. So if we go to our homepage, you can see that we had a new number generated, but if we go back to this homepage or we refresh, we get the exact same random number being generated, and that's because of how fetches are cached by default. So essentially what's happening is this entire page and the fetch request inside of it are all being cached by default, and then after a certain period of time, the cache is cleared out and it generates a new response. So that's essentially combining together that fetch request are cached and combining together the fact that our client router is caching information. And that's where we get a delay where after a certain period of time, it's 30 seconds by default, we're going to get a new number. So if I do this again, it hasn't quite been 30 seconds yet, but once 30 seconds pass, this will generate a new number and it'll stay exactly the same for 30 more seconds. Same thing on this other page. When I click it, you can see no matter how many times I click the link, I got the exact same number and even swapping back and forth between the two, you can see these two numbers stay exactly the same for each individual page. Now, if I do a full refresh of the page, you notice I'm actually getting different numbers every single time for this other request. While on my homepage with a fetch request, it stays the same. This is really more a caveat of how development mode works more so than anything. When I go to production, you'll see that they essentially stay exactly the same no matter how I refresh the page. Now, finally, if we go to this API option real quick and we look at this, you can see every time I refresh the page, I get a completely different number every single time. And that's again, only because I'm in development. In production, this number will stay exactly the same. So now let's go back here. 
zoom this back out and look at the Next.js 15 version. You can see the code for both of these is exactly the same. So on my homepage, I'm doing a fetch request and you can see every time I go to that page, no matter what I do to refresh it, I'm getting a brand new number every single time. Same thing on this other page, I get a brand new number every time because this is no longer being cached. And on my API, if I zoom this in and I do some refreshes, you can see I get the same or a brand new number every single time. So overall, it's a much more intuitive system inside of this new way of doing things because essentially it caches less things by default. But when we move into the production way of doing things, and I actually build out the site, you'll notice it doesn't quite work as you expect it to. So if we just come over here, I'm gonna do a really quick build for both of these, okay? Those just finished building and I have them running in the production mode. And now you'll notice something interesting. If I go to the homepage here, you notice I get the exact same number. When I refresh, I get the exact same number. Same thing here, if I go to the other page and I click on it, or if I refresh it, I get the same number. It actually refresh and it gives me a different new number, but now that new number is exactly the same every single time. So you can see there's kind of weird behaviors going on with caching. And this is because it's caching things on the page level. So after a 30 second delay, I'm essentially going to get different numbers, but those numbers are then going to stay the same for 30 seconds. So we'll come back to this and I'll show you that. And if we go to the API here and I zoom this in, no matter how many times I refresh, I get the exact same number because it's caching those get requests by default, which is super unintuitive. So that's the old way how things were done in Next.js 14. Now let's go ahead and look at Next.js 15. You noticed originally when I was doing my fetch request, it should get me a brand new number every single time. When I click on home, you can see it got me a new number a couple times, but now it's stuck again using this exact same number. And when I refresh the page, you notice it's kind of giving me the same number. It's doing some weird caching stuff where it's essentially giving me the exact same result every single time. If I go to my other page and I refresh this one, you notice that it's kind of hopping between the same number over and over again. Also, it's really weird behavior going on here. And then finally, the only one that does work intuitively is this API. You can see every time I refresh this, I get a brand new number. So at least that is working as I expect it to. But these other pages are really not making much sense. It's kind of just hopping between two different numbers. And same thing with this one is hopping between two different numbers. Also to showcase that 30 second time limit, if I go back up to this Next.js 14 and I change this to refresh the page, you notice I now get a new number, but it stays exactly the same when I do my refreshing. Same thing here on other, I get a brand new number and it stays exactly the same, even though the refresh gives me sometimes different numbers. Again, super confusing stuff to deal with the cache. So what exactly is going on here? Well, the problem with all this comes down to how the actual page is built. I'm gonna expand this over a little bit so we can see what our terminal looks like. I'm just gonna make one of these bigger than the other because they both essentially work the same. And you'll notice if I just rerun the build, that way it'll actually render out properly. If I rerun this, you'll notice that the pages that are being rendered statically versus dynamically are a little bit different. The API is being rendered dynamically because we're in Next.js 15 here specifically. So you can see this API route is rendered dynamically because I'm in Next.js 15, but all these these other pages are static. So it's just returning to me a static result every single time. So even though my fetch request is no longer being cached, it doesn't matter because the entire page is still being cached because it's not dynamic. There's nothing in here that indicates to Next.js that this page is dynamic. And this is something that's incredibly unintuitive because you would think if you have a fetch request and the fetch request is not being cached, obviously I should get a new result every time, but you're not because the page is itself a static page, not dynamic. Now we can fix this by coming in here and just adding a simple export where we export a constant variable called dynamic and set that equal to force dynamic. And that will essentially force Next.js to re-render this page every single time you call it, treating it as a dynamic page. And we can add this to every single one of our pages that we want to deal with. So I'm gonna put it on my other page as well as my home page. I'm gonna do this both in Next.js version 15 and I'm gonna do it in version 14 so we can see the differences between Next.js 14 and 15. So I'm gonna throw that in there, come into this page and do the exact same thing. Make sure I copy over the line properly. There we go. So now Next.js 14 and 15 should hopefully render everything properly. I'm gonna do a build for both of these. So I'm gonna come in here, run my build for this one, run my build for this one. And we should see that if we look at the actual Next.js 15 version, we should have dynamic pages being rendered for all of these. So if we scroll up, you can see my home page, my API, and my other page are all being rendered dynamically. Now, let me go ahead and actually start the application up so we can see what this looks like. So I'm gonna start both of these applications, make this a little bit more even between the two bring this over so we have a larger screen to work with. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna refresh my page. So we can come in here with a refresh and we can come in with a refresh here. And you'll notice now every single time I go to my homepage on a refresh, I'm getting essentially the same number in Next.js 14. Doesn't matter what I do. You can see same exact number. When I go to my other page here and I do my refresh, you can see when I'm doing a refresh, it's giving me a brand new number. But when I'm clicking the link to navigate to it, it keeps the exact same number. Now, the reason for that is because now I'm no longer caching that page on the server, but I'm still caching it on the client. That's if we go back to the documentation here, that is this client router cache. By default, every single dynamic page in Next.js is cached for 30 seconds on the client. 
And then after those 30 seconds, it'll bring you a brand new version from the server. This is super unintuitive because if I have a dynamic page, I probably want the data on it to update every single time I refresh my page. But in our case, it only refreshes every 30 seconds. Otherwise it stays the same unless I manually refresh the page. But when I navigate around like this in my client, you can see it stays exactly the same for 30 seconds. Now, luckily this is fixed in Next.js 15. You can see every time I go to my homepage or my other page, I get a brand new number being generated every single time because there is no longer any client side caching for these routes. So every time I navigate to a page that is dynamic, it's going to automatically re-render that data for me without having anything cached. So this aspect of getting rid of that client portion of the cache was incredibly well done in my opinion. And I think it works exactly as they intended it to. And if you really want to still use the client side of the cache, you can just add this stale times dynamic 30 back into here. And essentially it's going to give you the exact same behavior that Next.js 14 had, but I find that behavior kind of unintuitive. Now we've already talked about API routes. We didn't actually modify these, how these work much better in Next.js 15 because it actually changes the number every single time. This is again documented inside of here, and it's something that they did incredibly well. And I think that this is essentially the correct way to do GET request, and I don't see any reason to do it the way Next.js 14 did. But if you want, you can force static instead of force dynamic on those pages to give you the same behavior as Next.js 14. The place where they kind of drop the ball though is when dealing with fetch requests specifically on this home page because you can see i'm getting the exact same number every single time in the old version of next.js 14 while in this new version i'm getting a brand new number every single time but the only way i could force next.js to give me a new number was if i forced my page to be dynamic so if you have a fetch request on a page that doesn't have any other dynamic code for example you have like a list of all the to do's on your page that's probably not something that's going to have dynamic code anywhere. You need to make sure you force the page to be dynamic. And this is something that I think is just kind of unintuitive with Next.js as a whole. They received a lot of pushback on the caching with how it's confusing, how fetch is essentially monkey patched to do different things in Next.js than normal, and just all these other things about how the cache is confusing. But overall, I think the big sentiment that most people have is that almost everything in Next.js is opted into caching by default which is great for certain things to make it more simple to actually write your application and get better performance. But the problem is the fact that it's so heavily cached and so many things are opted into it automatically is that you run into more problems than you actually get solved by having it automatically done for you. Because there's so many cases where you have code that should be dynamically generated, but Next.js is automatically caching it for you. And this is incredibly unintuitive. And even for someone like me who has read the caching documentation in Next.js top to bottom, probably at least 10 times at this point. I've wrote an entire blog article on how the cache works. I've made multiple videos. I have a full Next.js course. Like I understand how Next.js caching works front to back, probably better than most people do. And I still get confused about how the cache is working in certain scenarios, especially because it's so much different in development versus production. I think if they just streamlined it and made it so it's exactly the same in development and production and made it much easier for you to see what pages are cached and what pages aren't, that would already solve a lot of problems but also just making it so instead of opting out of caching, you opt into caching, which is the more standard way of doing things, that again would make it so much easier. There's definitely a right way to make caching and opt in by default, but the way that Next.js has done it, I just don't think is quite there. And these new changes, while yes, they do fix some of the big problems, they still leave a lot wanting, especially with having to force certain pages to be dynamic. I understand why they did this and I get the design philosophy behind it, but it's really confusing, especially for newer developers. And I think it's gonna push a lot of people away from Next.js. So if you were hoping Next.js 15 was gonna be the silver bullet that solved caching, unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that's probably not going to be the case. But if you do want to truly master caching in Next.js, I highly recommend checking out my full blog article that goes super in depth into everything you need to know about caching with documentation, diagrams, and so on. I'll link it in the description. And if you want to go even further into Next.js, I have a full Next.js course. I'll link it in the description for you as well that covers everything, including caching in super incredible depth with examples, diagrams, and everything to make it as simple as possible for you to understand. Now, with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.